right here and I can share it. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Choir Directors Academy Weekly Seminar on Intellectual Radio Live, and also to my diehard family, sweethearts, my sweethearts over there on the Facebook side. Welcome. I'm glad to see you all out here with me on tonight. Do me a favor on Facebook, like and share. You know what we do. We like and share, and we tag, and we let everybody know that we're out here. Intellectual Radio family, text your friends, call them, and let them know that the weekly seminar is here i want to give a couple of shout outs i see my friend elder kelvin mcgee who has a connections show on saturday at 12 noon you all should check him out it's a lot of other of you out there uh type in your name so i can give you a shout out i want people to know that i'm not here by myself um last week we had a show we had a nice young man with us on last week darrell green of one voice in victory arnett's one voice in victory choir they released a CD entitled You Can. And he's, he, we talked to him on last week on how he was inspired and how he came up with the song and his history in music. Just an all-around nice young man. And he has great ideas, and he's really striving to do the best that he can in Christ and also in the music industry. So we want to support our young people. Yes, we do. When they're doing something good and noteworthy, we want to support him. His song, You Can, is on all digital outlets. So let's support him, download, and let's just help him out and encourage him in the way. Um, I want to uh, thank you, Charles, Charlie. Yes, he's already answering the question. I haven't even got started. <laughs> I haven't even got started yet. Um, last week, my producer Earl uh, came to me with a question. He said, "Are choir directors necessary?" for the choir to sing, perform, or whichever terminology you want, you want to use. But are they necessary? And he brought up the point that uh, back when he remembers going to church, the choir directors were basically selected because they were the best singers in the choir. And we all know that to be true. Because, you know, I mean, I'm growing up in the church. And I, I love my church. I love the Church of God in Christ. I love them. But a lot of times they would pick, pick people also based upon your singing abilities. And you can riff and run. And you're in charge of the choir. You may not have any clue or background or any management skills um, that are necessary in order to do the, do the job. I want to give a shout out to my mom and dad who are watching. Um, so I took, I created a poll, and I put it out there on my Facebook family, and I said, cast your vote. Are choir directors really necessary for the choir to sing, for that department to thrive and grow? And 97% of you all said yes, a choir director is necessary, and 3% said no. So I told them put your comments down and i had one of my friends he's a very he's a music enthusiast as well uh we call him dr alvin carter he said definitely that's like having an orchestra without a conductor and then uh my my neighbor Beatrice carter said yes i've seen choirs function without one 
but it's always good to have a leader. It breeds, uh, what did she say? It breeds cohesion. In other words, it, it brings everybody together. And then um, my uh, cousin, April, Latrice Reed, she said absolutely. And one of my other sisters, Melissa, said absolutely. And then Demetria Pitts, William Pitts, who is a retired music president or music director of music for her church, was, uh, she had a very large department. And she managed that department for 30 years. She's now retired. She said that depends on the musical performance intelligence of the choir. That was a mouthful. Uh, she said a director is an asset. Uh, but as you know, she said, I'm always the rebel. And so I thought about that. You know, at first when, when, um, when my producer brought it up to me, I right away, you know, my mind was like, yeah, well, yeah. Not just because I'm a choir director. That had nothing to do with it. But I'm just sitting there thinking like, well, yeah, you need a choir director in order to, to um, do this. But then when I talked to Dem Demetra and I thought about it, I'm like, she's absolutely right. It depends on the level, the skill set of the people that are in the group. And you may say, maybe not. No, 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 no. Case in point. A person like myself, now I do background vocals for various people when they call me or whatever, okay? But I also have friends, you know, Navinka Williams, Cornelius Owens, I have Don Mayberry, Elliot Bell, and it's Andrea Brown, Adrian Brown, a lot of us, Vanessa Deuce, a lot of us out there are singers and directors in our own right, right? So if they called us and told all of us to come together and sing, and if one of them led a song, the rest of us would just fall in line. We don't need somebody standing there, you know, doing this, hitting the head. We don't need that. I mean, first of all, all of us would learn a song on our own. So I don't need you to teach me because we all know how to sing. We all know how to, we all, uh, for our choirs, we teach the part. So I know how to hear my part. And even if I don't know the song, nine times out of ten, I'm going to catch on. You sing it once, you know, you run through it once. I got it. I can recognize the music in my part and be able to hum or sing. And I thought about it. I said, well, not really. She's absolutely right. If the people that are singing have that ability and they are like music enthusiasts, they can sing and perform without a director. But then how many people are like that, though? That's the question. We don't have that many people out there that have that are that deep in enthusiasm for music that can sing without somebody leading them. Because I, you know, I think about it just in the um, just with the regular choir world that I w I have participated in. Now, I remember in high school and college. Um, some of us, some, some of the chorales, we didn't have a leader per se. It was just a student that just like, we just got up and sang cause we all wanted to sing. So we just, you know, went over and then, but when we had a mixed multitude of people, let, let's say people who are new or people who had an agenda, then we had to have a choir, a choir director. And I'm saying that in the sense that everybody that is in the choir is not there because they love to sing. You have some people who have hidden agendas. They want to be the director. They want to be the, the show, the showcase. They want to be, you know, in that case, then you do need a director to step in and help out. But, um, and, you know, and I thought about it. I said, and also, um, it's just, I mean, it's just, it's, it, it's a kaleidoscopic type question to look at. Because now I'm thinking of something else. But as a whole, and her point is true, but then Alvin brought up a point about, he said it, it also depends on what type of song. Like if you think about the word, my one of my favorite choirs, they're not gospel, but they are they are a college choir. And I sing in the, in the, um, in the college choir, and I miss it so much. Oh, my goodness. And my sister laugh, looks at me because of the type of music that you sing, the old Negro spirituals and how you have to resonate and project. And she kind of looks at me like, I don't like that. But I do. I love it. But in it, the they won um, the 2017, the Aeolians, the Oakwood Aeolians. They won the World Choir Competition, which means they competed against other choirs from other countries. 
and they were the champions. And Alvin brought up that point that if a choir like that, even though everybody is very skilled, you still need somebody that's more skilled to pull all of that together. And that's true. You need somebody who is gifted, who has an understanding of music, but they also have to be a people person, know how to identify different personality types, have an understanding of psychology because you got so many different people that you're dealing with. So, I mean, it, it varies. It depends, it really depends on who you're working with. And I kind of look at it as the law. Um, we look at the law and we expect a choir director to me, in a sense, is like the law. And this is just, we, we keep it at very high level. We're not going to get all into the specifics of law, of what it's actually doing. But theoretically, the law is really for the lawless, people who don't know how to abide and to do things the right way. And it's also to ensure fairness and equity. And like I said, we're not going to get deep, but I'm just saying on a surface level, I'm talking from a, a lightweight criminal law and basically a business law perspective. You, it's, it's there to make sure things are done fairly and done right. And to me, in my mind, that's what I see a choir director is doing. Case in point, if you have somebody that is in the law, if you have a person, two different people that may do something and cause the death of a person and it's considered depraved indifference, well, both of them are supposed to be judged on the same level. It's basically second degree manslaughter or something like that, or a second degree murder or whatever. If the law is supposed to see both of them the same and give them both the same judgment, and we do know how the world works is not necessarily true. It depends on how much money you got and who your lawyer is. But that's the theory of it. And as choir directors, that's part of our job to ensure things are done equitable, that we are fair in what we do and how we do things. Francesca said the skill set and the anointing together. Exactly. And Charles said, Charles Charlie said, yes, always because who is going to lead the corral? You need somebody to lead. Shout out to my uncle Jack who's watching or my Aunt Joanne. I don't know which one it is. Uh, and Hatcher Roy out there. Good to see you out there. But that's the thing. A choir director is supposed to make sure things are functionally, functionally correctly. And I was also thinking we're there to maintain order. And it's like anything else. If you got too many cooks in the kitchen, you can't have multiple people um, being taking the lead position because everybody doesn't know how to sub, how to work with people. Everybody doesn't know how to do that. And sometimes it appears that they do, but when I work with choirs where you had somebody that where you got two people, one person may be up trying to teach a song or whatever, and then you got two other people that can direct, trying to tell them how to direct, how you should sing, how you should teach the song. That's the wrong key. You're supposed to be using the Nashville method. You're on the diatonic scale. You're on the chromatic scale. That is a rate. That is an augmented chord. You know, all of this kind of stuff to prove a point. The director is there to settle that and make sure, no, we don't need that. You, it's like in Greek, mytholo in Greek mythology, I was reading a couple of days ago, and it was talking about, that's what made me think about order and that you have to have somebody in charge. And I was thinking in Greek mythology, they have they had this uh, multi-headed dog called Orthos, Orthos, and he was a guard. And it was like he couldn't, <laughs> three different heads, and he's all over the place trying to figure out who he's supposed to be protecting. I, I heard he was supposed to be a guard dog. I have no idea. I'm not that deep into Greek mythology. I just read it sometimes just to, to see what, goes on but when you have a person that's in, you need one person designated and that person needs to be strong i can tell you that they need to be strong you can't be a person who has kinship type of mentality because if you do you're going to hurt the rest of the folks that sit there if you you know favor your people and you know you when you depending on let me back this up it depends on what type of choir you're directing if you're doing a community choir, you have a little more leeway because it, it basically you have one person that's in charge. If it's a community choir, they pick the song. They do it all, but it's their community choir. You know what I'm saying? It's outside of the norm. But when you have a church choir and you're dealing with a group of volunteers, and these are people that 
you've been given to work with, you have to be careful how you manage them. You have to be careful the type of order or the type of setting that you have with the group. You have to make sure that um, there is a clear level of fairness because you're going to lose people. If I come to rehearsal and you know I'm skilled, but you, you don't allow me to do anything because I might be slightly more skilled than you in something, then you're going to lose that person and everybody that's connected to the person. I'm not saying that you have to be a coward. I'm not saying that you don't stand up. But at the same time, you need to know how to maneuver and how to pull people together. That is a skill. In order to maintain order, you need that skill set. You need to be a people person. You know, and some people think it's so easy, you know, all I'm going to do is just stand there and I tell everybody what to do. But guess what? When I have a platform, I don't use it. I use it to maintain order and to help, but I use it primarily to help people because my thought process is this. When I get a job, like, you know, I'm at, I recently was uh, presented with an opportunity to be over a choir for a conference that's gonna last like three days. Three days, three nights, pretty much. Okay, going in the door, I you know, most people that I know, when they go in the door, the first thing they do, I mean, and, and, and just to give you an analogy of what it's like, when you have a convention, each night the choir is gonna sing anywhere between four to five songs. Period. You can just bank on it. So if I got a three-day convention, that means I need to have 20 songs right away that everybody knows. I need to know how many people can direct, how many people can sing. I need to sit there because it's a real job, and a lot of people don't understand that, that you just don't arbitrarily pick a song out of the air and say, okay, this is what we're doing. No. I may have 20 songs. I say, okay, this is a list. I come up with 20 songs, and then I got to have five songs for the offering, or three songs, or five for the offering, because I may plan on three or these three songs here, but then the shift, the, at, the atmosphere and the service may not call for that. Then I need to have backup songs just in case I don't have the choir members that I need. You have your strong ones. Some nights you can sing with a choir any song because you got everybody there. But then sometimes you have a choir that's not as strong as the one that you may have had the previous night. So you got your backup list of songs that you're going to call from in order to make the service go. It, I mean, it's really not that simple. A lot of people think it is, but it's not. If you want it to, if you're looking at it as ministry, okay, in myself, me coming in, I'm not going to walk in there and direct all those songs. It's just an impossibility. I do know some people that will stand there and direct all 20 songs. They will do it all, you know, because in their mindset, that is the way it's supposed to be. And this, this is my mindset, and I have always been successful in this point. I don't walk in looking to direct everything. You know why? Because in my mindset, you called me to this job because you've already seen what I've done. You already know what I'm capable of doing. You've seen me direct. You've seen me play the organ. You've seen me play the drums. You've seen, heard me sing. You heard my choir. So you're calling me in because you already know that I'm qualified. So then in that case, when I go to this conference, I'm not going to, chances are I won't direct unless the leader says, I want to see you do it. Because I'm like, everybody already knows. So my, I will use that platform to promote the rest of the people who are skilled, who may never get that opportunity. I'm going to sit there and make sure they get an opportunity because it's not about me. It's about the ministry. It's about developing people. It's about growing people and helping them to get better in the ministry, helping them to improve their skills, helping them to um, develop into better directors. You know, sometimes, you know, every song is not going to be perfect. You know, I may, I may call a flop. Well, you know, sometimes that happens, and then I may have to get up at that time and make the play. If that person di directs and it doesn't come out the way we should, then I may have to get up there and do something. You understand what I'm saying? So, I mean, it as be creating an ordered atmosphere because the choir, the people that are there will respect you based upon how you treat them. If you treat them like they're just a, a bunch of cattle and you got a pride and you're going to do what I say and it's all about me, you're going to lose people. But if you have the right spirit and the orderly spirit within yourself, you have to be in leadership. You have to be healed within yourself. Because whatever's going on inside of you, 
you're going to spew it out in front of the people. And if you messed up on the inside, the choir will be messed up. If you're confused on the inside, the choir is confused. It, it's just because you're open and you become emotional when you're up there directing. If it's a song that you like, you get emotional. So whatever is in you comes out. And if you're giving mixed signals and you're like off beat with the musicians and you're fussing and yelling at people, guess what? That's going to change the whole atmosphere in the group. And then the next time you sing, you may have less peace for people, but then that's on you. So as a director, you have to have order inside of you before you can give order to somebody else. And I didn't mean to really like go off on that, but it, you know, I mean, that is what it is. Shout out to Rochelle. Hey there. She has a show on Monday talking about cancer warriors talk. So tune in on Monday to check out her. Hey, Scott, that's my him buddy right there. And Crystal, good to see you. Albert, good to see you. And Shanita, glad you're better. Um, good to see you out there as well. Um, directors are also responsible for giving directions and settling confusion. Um, and, and, and with any, with any um, group, or department, or anything, when you're dealing with emotions, think music is an emotional art. I know we try to you know, make it spiritual. And, and people, every, let's just face it, everybody doesn't consecrate themselves before they hit their choir stand. Some people just walked out of Popeye's chicken with all this grease and french fries, and they load it down, and you trying to tell them to sing in the key of A flat, and you got to drop it down to C sharp because they can't get there. All right? So, you know, everybody, <laughs> mine is not there. Some people eat the wrong food. Yeah, I mean, you got all kinds. People don't realize you have all kinds of stuff going on. People come up with the silliest things. And you sitting there looking like you waited five minutes before showtime to tell me <laughs> that this is, yeah, really? You know, you had, you've been sitting there a half hour and you decided to walk up to me five minutes before we're about to walk up there and tell me something that I can't control. All right. So you you spend half your time giving directions. You know, sometimes before the group perform, I tell them all, make sure you drink plenty of water. Make sure your clothes are right. Fix the hymns. Make sure your tie is right. <laughs> make sure you got breath mints in your in your pocket. You know, stay away from the onions. You have to give direct. Is that my, is that <laughs> you have to give directions. That's all I can say. Even when people are singing. You need to know the material well enough so that when somebody is singing, you can tell them that's not the note. You're flat. You're below the note. And because, you know, most people can't hear. They, you know, we, we moving on. You have to let them know where they are. Because, and then you got people that are trying to tell somebody, well, I know how to sing. Not necessarily. Because if you did, you wouldn't sound the way you do. You know, you got all kinds of people that you have to deal with. So you have to be firm in what you're doing. This is why we need choir directors, but we need directors who are not afraid to give direction. You cannot be timid and afraid and scared. Well, if I don't tell them or if I do tell them, they may walk away. You're going to have turnover anyway because everybody doesn't like to follow leadership. So you're going to have turnover, but you, if, you, if you're if you fair and consistent in what you do and you give clear directions you're going to get a group of people that are going to follow you anyway i mean some people want to have that they want to sing they want to be with an ideal choir director is a person that knows where they're going they have goals and if you're teaching me and if i can out teach you then chances are i'm not going to follow you if i'm in choir rehearsal and we have a we have a song and i and, and i've seen this where um we're in rehearsal, and the person who's leading all over us has no no musical background, really. And you got those of us who have musical background. And, you know, let me just throw this out here. Even in that case, I still would try to work with you and follow you. I, You know, I'm not one of those people that try to embarrass you, you know, because you don't know, and I know, and I'm going to try to embarrass you. I won't do that. I'll just sit there and be like, well, you know, until you ask. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not that type of person. Now, there are people that sit in there that will pull, yank the rug off from under you. I'm not about that because I believe you will reap what you sow. You know, because there's everybody doesn't know everything about every subject. And some in some arenas, I'm I'm not that gifted. I, I'm gifted when it comes to music and math, but maybe not in medicine or what some other subject. 
But my job or a director's job is to maintain order and give direction. If somebody is, is trying to usurp or take over from a person, then it's your job to step up and correct that. I've seen that where they just let a person almost like get beat up. And it's like you're supposed to stand and let and 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 be like, excuse me, <laughs> this is not happening here. You know, um, this person is up, and if that person gets a little, you know, whatever, then the director's job is to stand up and 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 correct the situation. A lot of times, I had to do that um, when I seen people. I can tell when a person, you know, they may be a junior director or a staff director, and they're struggling. Then I will step up and kind of smooth it over a little bit. And, you know, like, oh, okay, let me help you out a little bit, just a little bit, you know, because I, you know, you have to watch both. Because if you have a staff director and they're not getting over or communicating like they should be, then it's your job to watch. You're watching the choir and you're watching the director. When you see frustration start building on the choir, then that means you need to step up and settle. Settle the confusion. Step up and help that director as well as settle the confusion in the choir. You have to set direction. And that's not easy because a lot of times... <laughs> Especially if it's somebody that gets on your nerves. Sometimes you sit there and you be like, I'm going to let you struggle. You know, you know that's not right. You're supposed to get up and help them out. <laughs> Sometimes you want to sit there and let them just struggle. You know, and, and let them know that this is not as easy as it looks. But that that's part of your job. Keeping direction, keeping everybody focused on what the agenda is. And, and maintaining the right atmosphere and the right spirit in the group. Um, I don't know why I'm in a teaching mode right now, but I'm trying to. It's my producer's fault. He's the one that brought up this question. <laughs> hey, Chris Holloway, good to see you. Um, and um, another point is for accountability. Sometimes as directors, um, we can get sideswiped in the sense that we get so engrossed in our job that we forget to delegate. And we wear ourselves thin because we're trying to do so much. You know, this is the age of the multitasking. Everybody trying to do multi things. I'm listening to you. I'm typing to this person. I got this going on. And, you know, we, we're, 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 in that, we're in that society. Um, as directors, we have to learn to hold other people in your group that's account accountable. Um, if you have people that want to help you, whether it's social media, whether it's getting the, making the announcements, whether it's collecting the funds, uh, whether it's directing, whether it's help teaching, if you have people that are capable to help you teach, they can teach well. Not somebody that say they can teach and then they get up and they, no. You don't need anybody that's tearing down uh, what you're trying to build. But you have to learn how to delegate. That's part of your job as leadership. You don't, you're not supposed to be doing everything. I am one of those people. I refuse to do everything. I know. Because <laughs> I want to live. I'm not trying to die earlier than what I'm supposed to, right? So then you need to uh, develop people and have a staff that you can share the responsibility with. And in order to keep that department functioning the way that it should function. Because... Sometimes, like I said, we can get overwhelmed and we're just like, well, I'm going to do it. If, if I don't do it, I want, I'm going to do it all because I want it done a particular way. Okay, if you only got, if you got a choir and it's small and you don't have that many talented people, you might be able to get away with that. But if you got 25 or more people in the choir or even 15 or more people, you don't have time to be doing everything. Even though my choir is small, I don't do everything. Uh-uh. No, no way. I, it, I have, I'm in the process of rebuilding my choir, so that's why I don't take many engagements right now um, because I got some new people in there, and I need to train them. They need to be confident because we sing before a lot of different people, and if you're not confident in your singing and you start singing in front of, like, the Brown Sisters or, you know, the Lennox and people like that, you're going to freeze. I don't have time for that. <laughs> so I'm in the process of rebuilding them. But even in this group that I have, I really don't teach them. Oh, no. I've already, the ones that, who know, I've already done that. So all I'm going to do is send you a YouTube link, and you go get it. And you do what you're supposed to do. I got somebody else responsible for the dues. I got somebody else helping me. No. So you have to learn, as a director, give direction and make pe hold people accountable. You know? You have to learn how to do that. If not, you're going to wear yourself thin. 
and every and you're gonna have to retire earlier than what you anticipate because you worn yourself thin. You don't want to do that. Okay, so back to my producer's question: Are choir directors necessary? Yes, we are. I only hit three bullet points. I think I did a show, but almost two years ago, and I think I may have had 17 or 18 things. I need to pull that out <laughs> and break it up in like three parts and go over that. We are definitely necessary, but we need choir directors that really love the job. You know, not people who are using it as a stepping stone to fame. We have a lot of that. A lot of people get into it just because they want to be, you know, they want their name on the platform. You know what? And a lot of times when you do that, when you're not about the ministry, but you're about the fame, you're about the recognition, you're about the name dropping, you're about that. When you do that, you lose a lot. You know, people don't really gravitate to you when they see, because what you fail to realize is what spirit is in you is flashed before you even open your mouth. You know, people can look at you and tell when you when you know the subject and you, you're versed in what you do. And they also can look at you and tell when you're all about the show. You know, and once the show is over, you know, I'm done, you know, whatever. But as a choir director, you definitely need to be a people person. You need to love people. If you don't love people, don't be a choir director because you're going to run the folks away. If you, you know, being a choir director, you need to know, understand music. You need to have some type of musical understanding of theory, of notation. You need to understand some things in order to teach people. That's how the choir will develop confidence in you because they see that you take the time to study. What does the Bible tell us? Study to show yourself approval, workmen that need not be ashamed. And the other part is rightly dividing the word of truth. But you need to study and prepare yourself before you reach that rehearsal. Don't let the people come and, and be disgusted because you're not ready. So, I mean, you need to be a person that is prepared. You need a person that has a walk with Christ. Because you're dealing with biblical proportion, things that are biblical in nature. So you would need to know the Bible, I would think. Amen, somebody. All right. <laughs> But, and all around, you need to be fair. I've always told people that you don't have to be a Christian to be fair. That should just be a, a, a standard part of your personality. Understanding how you feel if you are unfairly treated. And that's why I said we need to be healed. Because sometimes we are, are in uh, choral ministries where we're not treated fairly. And if we're not healed, when we become in leadership, we'll pour that same poison onto the people. And we'll hurt people unnecessarily. Okay? So that's all I got on tonight. I hope that answered my producer's question. I heard him laugh a couple of times. So I guess I guess I did my job. I want to thank all of you for tuning in on tonight. Intellectual Radio, thank you so much for joining me on tonight. Facebook fam, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate I think you all were more or less listening to me. I didn't I didn't see you all saying too much. All I see is I yay and smiles and hearts. So that means you enjoy what I said. Tune in next week. We got another topic for you. I think you're going to enjoy it. We'll see. I don't know. You might. But until then, you all have a great evening. Love you all. And peace.